Listener discretion is advised. Go! Run! Go! Adam Cruel and Dr. Drew. Love Line, Coast to Coast. It, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Do I sound bad? Not any more so than usual. Oh, shut up. Does everything have to be an opportunity for you to knock me down? You, who's uh, dressed like a uh, the uh, fifth member of a barbershop quartet. <laughs> <laughs> You're dressed like a, a barber's pole. That's right. Yeah. Never noticed that. Listen, what happened to those days when you put that pole out front or the wooden Indian out front of the tobacco store? I miss that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, who decided... It would another job for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Drew, uh, somebody stole the uh, wooden Indian. We need a replacement pronto. Jeez, what do I do? Just act natural. Just go out there and be yourself, brother. Tammy Lynn Michaels is our uh, guest tonight. She's from uh, Popular. This is uh, 9 o'clock on uh, Friday nights on the WB. And... And uh, it's uh, it's one of uh, uh wait wait now were you picked as uh, one of TV Guide's returning favorites or is Popular picked as one of TV Guide's returning favorites? Uh, popular was. Oh, I'll take credit uh, for the entire thing. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, let's uh, let's talk about uh, Popular. And Tammy works with our friend Ron. Oh, Ron, Ron Lester. Ron Lester. Yeah. We should call him the big, big L. Big Ron. Yeah. He's he's just healthy. Ronnie. You spent a big R. You gave you a ride somewhere last time you guys were together, right? That's something? right, yeah. Ronnie Lester. Yeah. I love that Ron knows more people than God. Wherever yeah. I go, hey, you know Ron. Oh, he's very popular. Let's keep talking about Ron Lester. <laughs> okay. So who's Ron Lester? How do I know him? Ron Lester oh, Varsity Big Ron. Blues. Big Ron. Big Ron. Blues. Oh, okay. Listen, here's the deal. When there's, whenever a guy weighs over, let's say, 375, mm -hmm. you cannot just call him by his Christian name. <laughs> you have to work Big Ron in or, uh, you know, Jumbo Ron or something like that because otherwise <laughs> everyone will go cold on the trail. I'm yeah. trying to picture Ron Lester. Yeah. And besides, Ron Lester sounds like a guy who goes about 135 pounds yeah. and has a, a constant nasal problem or something. No, Ron Lester. You know Ron. Yeah, Ron gave us... Uh, well, he gave me a ride home. Right. True. Where were you? I was drunk. Yeah. He gave me a ride. He gave me a. Well, that's why you're with Ron. He gave me a ride home from uh, from a uh, Oscar party. Right. Told me uh, right. told me like going down on the ladies. Get two chicks in the same bed. <gasps> Do them. That's right. Oh my God. Yeah. Not only the he ladies, me. but the uh, professional ladies. He said uh, he didn't mind uh, getting down there. He's with. a good boy. I'm I'm very, sure, I I'm sure appreciate you talking. About a good boy. I, I like. He's a he's a wonderful. He's boy. He's a wonderful lad. But I, I said to him, <laughs> I said, uh, Ron, you uh, going down on a hooker is like uh, <laughs> it's like um, getting a rental car and then having it detailed and then bring it back to the lot on a flatbed. There's just as much in it for you. You understand? Paying 85 bucks, getting the tires armor all, and then pushing it back the lot and leaving it there. Ron's got some oral issues now. <laughs> no. <laughs> Again, yeah, I, can't, I was drunk. He probably said not to talk yeah, about I it. I was going to say, I'm sure you appreciate <laughs> you, you bringing it up. He probably swore something right, and signed yeah. something. All right. So uh, the, the popular is very popular. Mm -hmm. Keep talking about it. I didn't know we are going to have a guest tonight, actually. So really? I'm slightly unprepared. Well, I looked up, see, Ann puts the uh, schedules up. Oh, my God, Tom couple, Arnold. A couple of weeks in Carrot advance, top. but uh, Ann was out a couple Ooh, of days. Insane so. clown process. Uh-oh. <laughs> what day is that? I'm not showing up that day. Oh, Next week? That's oh, wow. October 25th. Yeah, I'm going to have. Uh, I'm gonna be sick that night. Oh. Those guys scare me. They scare the crap out of us. All right, let's talk about popular, and then we'll uh, hop on the phones. And, and really, do I sound wrong in this microphone? Or no, is it my headphones? It's your headphones. You sound fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're fine. Yeah, you does it great. ever get old? A Anderson just went, you always sound bad. And it's like... <laughs> I, how do I communicate that I don't sound right without being made fun of by uh, co-workers or staff? Is that possible? Kiss my ass. You. But right. now, so the popular... Yeah. Um, it, it's becoming a, sort of a... a, a cult phenomenon. Yes, yeah, phenomenon. It's, yeah. it's very cult. Mm. Um, well, first of all, it's on Fridays at 9 on the dubba 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 Not since New Coke has there been such a great marketing plan. <laughs> you should meet the guy in real life, too. He's fuzzy. Um, it's interesting. It's it's uh, got some characters that are based in reality, and then there's characters that are based in West Hollywood's reality. Hmm. And um, I play a girl uh, who's driven by money and glamour and facade, 
and uh, if we therapeutically break it down, Dr. Drew, um, she just wants to be loved, mm. and she's very fear-based, but she holds mm. up this facade to um, keep away from any sort of uh, emotional intimacy and thus facing possible rejection. Ah. So. Angry? Uh, a bitch, basically. Angry. Uh, very angry, um, very prissy, very girly, uh, was the head cheerleader, but because she was always on her knees, she can't do cheerleading anymore. Well, it's a, um, it's a good picture. Uh, that, that brown jacket makes you look a little heavy, though. Down, down, oh, I'm down. heavy. Uh, for, uh, you, compared to some L.A. actors you've had in no. here, babe? Oh, yeah. Oh, I've, I've got the whole... No, I'm sorry. I was confused. I thought, uh, I thought <gasps> that was you in the lower right. I oh, was... you mistook me for Bryce Johnson? Yeah, I think that's that? the best compliment I've ever had. I was just kidding, you see. All I'd right. like to come back as him. I'd, um, like, to, I'd like to come back as uh, one of his buddies. Uh -oh. All right, kick that uh, thing and let's uh, take some calls. What do you say there, Drew? Mm -hmm. Is that going to work? Uh, oh, is it really screwed up? Usually you just have to jiggle something. The uh, yeah. the screen went out. All right, let me uh, hold on a second. This would be an opportune time to talk about the man show. Why? Talk about cult popularity. Why? Because it's on tonight. It's on right now. On uh, Comedy Central, everybody, 10 o'clock. This is the best episode we've ever done tonight. Oh, please. Oh, yes. What's the man show? How oh, dare yes. How Sorry. Dare you <laughs> You're to be a little honest. Pretend you don't know about the man show. Okay, we got it fixed. The Man Show is uh, its the best show on television. Best show on television. That's uh, Jesse Ventura, by the way. Jenny? Oh, wait a second. Let's work this out. Jenny? Yeah. You're 21. Yes, I am. What's up? Hey, I, I just saw The Man Show the other night, and I, yeah, I was cracking up laughing. It was with Rosie O'Donnell in the tunnel. Oh, she, get, she fell down the well. Yeah, that was funny. But my question is... Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I consider myself gay, but the thing about me is that I enjoy having threesomes. With males? With, yeah, another woman and a male. Okay. And what I want to know is if that is normal. I mean, because I consider myself gay, but I'm still kind of with a man and being with... And yeah. It sounds a little conflicted, doesn't it? What do you do with the guy during these threesomes? Well... I pretty much just, you know, am a third person where I participate, but, you know, I'm pretty much Aha! <laughs> the third person in the thing. All right, what do you do with the guy? What do I do with the guy? Uh, do you have yeah, that's it. I'm putting her oh, no, a little. On. I've got to swear I got about this much tonight come for these on, idiots. Come on, Hang it out. Spend ten minutes on one hey. goddamn question. What do you do with the guy? I give oral. Okay. That, that's it? And, you know, we do it in a three-way thing. We yeah. don't know what that means. You do the oral in the three-way thing? Yeah. Uh, oh, like a group activity. You make like a circle? Yeah, pretty the, much. The devil's triangle? <laughs> pretty much, yeah, like a triangle thing. <laughs> yeah, my compass would be spinning if I got in there. All right, so you, <laughs> you give the oral on the guy. The girl <clears throat> gives the oral on you. And the guy gives the oral on the phone with his buddies. Hey, guess where I am? <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. He gets on the phone and calls Ron Lester. <laughs> Ron. <Whoa. laughs> two chicks in the same bed. <laughs> I can't believe I got on this quick. All right. No, but what I want to yeah. know is, I mean, is it, is it, I mean. No, who cares? Listen, you're screwed up, so all bets are off. You know what I'm saying? You can, so, go, you can go in any direction sexually. Well, messed up, so just be happy. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Well, I mean, don't, don't, don't try to hold yourself. It's like. But you know how, what, how what, what I mean is, is you're you're trying to hold your sexuality up to some template that that yeah. only exists for normal people, and you're pretty <laughs> whacked out, right? So what do you want? Of course, it's a little you out sound, there. You sound confused. You sound conflicted. Yeah, and that's okay. What else is up with you? Um, that's pretty much. You all right? You working okay? I'm I'm doing good, living a happy life. I want to know if it's. Yeah, all right. Well, it's not like you're 85 and doing this in the nursing home. So I think at the age of 21, it's okay to sort of go out and have a little bit of fun as long as it's safe. Yeah. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, get your kicks. Okay, what what if I meet somebody and, you know, how do I, how do I bring this up to some people that, you know, this is, you know, what I like without... You mean oh, another female? Yeah. So you'd say you, you, you had a uh, steady lesbian relationship and you wanted to bring a guy into the bedroom. Is that what you're saying? Well, not necessarily. What are you saying? Something like that. What do you say? Something like that. That, that isn't going to fly. All right. All right. If, that, if that's what you need in an in a intimate relationship, then there's a problem because that is not going to 
It's okay. not going to well, allow it's not the, intimate. Me. It's not intimate. Yeah, right. the relationship won't sustain through that. You're 21 now. Get some batteries and, and the right size uh, vibrator. That's right. Does that mean it was just cut out? No. Oh, no. Okay. That's just that's the vibrator. That's no, the vibrator. We doing that little <laughs> the bleep. <laughs> yeah. No. Jeremy. Yes. You're 17. What's that? Um. Well, two years ago, I had sex with this one chick. She was my friend at the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh-huh. And. She was the one that was taking off the clothes and everything like that. And I was like, all right, cool, you know what I'm saying? And then we had sex, and afterwards we went out, you know, had a good time. The next day she told her mom that I raped her. I I mean, it was a really drawn-out case. Hmm. Um, I mean, there was no evidence, you know what I'm saying? How old were you? I was 15. Wow, how old was she? She was the same age. Four and a half. Mm. I see. She was 15. Right. And uh, why do you think she cried right? Because her mom found out that you slept with her or somebody slept with her and she didn't want her mom to find out that she willingly well, went along with it? Well, I think it was because, like, she was kind of tore up down there. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Down by, by what? Huh? How, how did she get torn up? I don't know. I mean, maybe, I don't know. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Before you got there? No, no, no. We know no, what you're no. saying. She's torn up down there. Sure. And, I mean, she was kind of hurting down there. Right. So, Monday she goes to school, and she went to the nurse, and the nurse called the police, and there was a rape kit done off, and then, you know, that type of deal. Ah, yeah. Well, listen, Drew, if you had a nickel for every time someone pulled a rape kit out, one of your bitches, I mean, you'd be a rich <laughs> man, right? Well, isn't that interesting? And see, the thing is, now, I'm dating this chick, and I told her, like, fly it out about it. And sure. To be upfront about rape. Right. And she's like, well, I wanted you to do that because at first I was kind of afraid because she might do something like that. What? Now that I know that, she she feels more comfortable about it. You know what I'm saying? Hold on a second. Let, let us uh, react. Let's adjourn to our office and uh, have a quick discussion about the defendant. You know, it's funny. These guys, they start off real innocent. Hey, we went out and she was kind of begging for sex. So I gave in to her and uh, now she cried rape. And you're like, well, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Then it was like, yeah, she's all torn up down there. <laughs> Uh huh. And then it's like, so now I got this new chick, you know, and she, she was telling her about it. And it's like, <clears throat> I'm sure this guy's attorney probably told him the same thing. Stop talking so much. Because it's like, <laughs> might as well, here, here's a shovel. Go ahead. Dig your way to China. Each syllable that comes out of his mouth, he goes from, oh, this poor guy was set up to, <laughs> uh, let's move to Canada. Yeah. This guy's a serial rapist. Yeah. It's kind of getting deeper and deeper. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Jeremy? Yeah. All right, so now you got a new girl, right? Who was convinced you were going to rape her? Right. No, 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 no. No, she, she, she's totally cool with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now that she knows you are, or have thought right. about rape. She, she was kind of afraid at first that you might rape her. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Didn't because I just say she was afraid you were going to rape her? All right. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And everyone's an idiot because because she'd heard that you'd had this. No, problem? no, no. She was. She's just. She's like Five. a real pretty type. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Well, listen. Good looking girls uh, know they're going to get raped at one point or another. <laughs> And that's they, you know, they go. They can walk around with their head on a swivel, like a good middle linebacker dropping back into his hook zone during right. a pass play. Got to keep your eyes moving. All right, so she was scared you're going to rape her, and you know, rightfully so. And it's, it turns out, uh, even though you'd had a rape conviction, ironically uh, I enough, didn't you weren't get convicted. Oh, you didn't get convicted. No, I okay. Mean, it was rape dropped case. and everything. Uh, it was dropped. All right, so now you're not going to rape this one. But so now, where are we? Well, this weekend I got this party coming up, and. She might want to do something. I'm afraid that you know what I'm saying. Good, stay that way. Wait That's a minute. Fine. You're afraid that what? I'm I'm afraid that if I do something, she, she might do the same thing. She might Good. Cry, rape. cry rape again. Well, yeah. how old are you this time, and how old is she this time? I'm 17, and she's 16. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, listen. Uh, wh- don't first off, don't tear her up down there. Right. Well, you she's can, a virgin. You can avoid that. Oh, well, oh, she's a virgin. Yeah. yeah. What is, oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, well, I see. I see. All right. Well, that eliminates that potential. So go at her. <laughs> this the guy's thinking is all screwed up, right? Yeah, uh, everyone who calls this show is somewhere between retard and supertard. Basically, <laughs> is how it goes. You know, they 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 make points that don't have a point. You know, I go, well, don't tear her up down there. Oh yeah, well, she's a virgin. <laughs> like, oh okay. Oh all right. Oh sorry, my my mistake. 
<laughs> I, well, it's I don't interesting know that, that he's getting ready to uh, supposedly getting ready to make love to his new girlfriend, and he's got this whole rape thing uh, on his mind. Yeah, but she she, she is not me the she, yeah, she is guy. not interested in having sex. All right, with him. Jeremy, guaranteed. Yeah. Listen, just be careful, buddy. She is not interested in having sex. If you end up having sex, evaluate that situation very carefully because she's a virgin. Take it she's, slow. She's not going to be. Condom. You don't know her yet. It's going to take but some time. So you do what I do. You get him to sign a release. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, he had a time card. Yeah, but release in a time card. You punch in. And permission slip from your parents. <laughs> That's right. I need a note, and I need one of those, uh, yeah, those, re you know, the same thing you use when you're filming on the street and uh, you talk to somebody. You get them to sign a that. release, uh, release. Form. Yeah, release form. Same, it's standard stuff in the industry. Sarah? Yes. You're 21? Yeah. What's up? Um, well, I was just wondering if, um, when my boyfriend was younger, he used to wrestle around with his brothers a lot, and he said he got hit in the scrotum a lot. Will that prevent from him from having kids? No, not likely. Okay. How how old is he? Twenty two. All what, right. What what put you down that bizarre path? Because we've been together for three years, and I had a child when I was seventeen, not from him. Yeah. And we've never used any kind of protection. Well, go ahead and start. Genius. Yeah. You've been very lucky. Yeah. You idiot. Why don't you use protection? Because we've never gotten pregnant. <laughs> well, you're going to. Oh, man, are you dumb. Are you going to wait till you get pregnant to start using protection? That's well, a little we, backwards. We want a kid. He's already graduated from college. We've been together for three years. We want one. When did you get married first? Because we don't want to get married. Why not? Because that's just legal paperwork. That's Not everybody has to get married to have a kid. No. Well, no, but if you're in the hospital and you're dying, it gives him some rights. And wh why not? his name to the birth certificate. He has the rights. No. Not to you. Why don't you ask him to... I mean, it's a way of sort of formalizing your, his commitment to you and your oh, commitment to him. Oh, who cares? Like, don't get married. But what about the first kid? Where's the first dad? Um, we, I've just never had anything to do with him. The do you want to do that again? That's no. What, that's what you're, road you're heading down. No, it's not. No, it's not. She's fine. <laughs> it's been three years. Where's been, this yeah. first kid? Have you screwed this kid up yet? No. He's the most... He, oh, he. Oh, I hate that. Oh, it's a girl? Yeah. Oh, good. My good. daughter considers... Um, he missed it, her dad. Yeah, and he's wonderful with her. He, okay. I couldn't ask for a better dad. Well, on All her right. behalf, then, why not form a family? Oh. A legal unit that is the family that requires uh, him to protect your children. It. What college did this guy graduate from? No. The college. University of New Mexico. No, that's not a real college. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What do they do? They, they uh, fire... Uh, uh, they fire ceramics out in, uh, out in ditches filled with leaves and twigs or something, right? And they build, like, adobe huts and stuff. I mean, what are, what are they doing at University of New Mexico? They don't do anything. What's the name of that? What's the name of that University of New Mexico? What's the name of the team? The, the mascot? Lobos. The Lobos. Wolves. Do you hear me? Yeah. Listen to He's a wolf, this guy. All right, sir. You, uh, you're fine. I hope, uh, you, listen, just give it, you're so young. Just give it a couple more years. Then you have a kid, all right? Let him, get, let him get his career going. Let him make some money. I mean, hasn't money been tight with him going to college and everything? Kind of. But now that he's finished, we were thinking he's done with school and everything will be going better now. Well, well, what's he, well why, don't we, why don't we wait till it goes better? Who supports yeah. you guys? Excuse me? Who pays for his schooling? He does. And he, and he pays for your daughter and your housing? We both work. All right. Wow. That's great mother. Okay. Oh, who watches the kid while you work? I have a babysitter. All so right. We work, like, I'll work and he'll be at home or at class and have a babysitter while he's in class and then I'm at home while he's at work. Okay. okay. All right, sir. Okay. Just uh, take it slow. Make some money. Here, okay, here's what I want to say to everybody. <clears throat> you can get by. Everyone can get by. People have that ability. I mean, you, your plane can go down in the uh, mountains and you can, you can survive the, the winter, most likely. I saw that movie. <laughs> you can survive, but why? Yeah. Why do it that way? Why not establish yourself? Why not make some money? If you got three kids, why not have yourself a nice big minivan so you don't have to ride in the bed of the truck? You know? Why not have an apartment or a house that has three or four bedrooms so everyone gets their own bedroom and the kids don't have to sleep on top of each other? Why not? Why not? Why not? Yeah, you can make it, but why? Why, why pin yourself up against the, the wall that way? Make a few bucks, get yourself established, get a house, get some dental care and some medical care, it's, get everything it's more set up, those sorts of and things. then have a kid. As you know, those those 
those the car parking tickets and the dental care and that kind of stuff is what puts you over the edge if you're not prepared. Yeah, why ma why make it such a struggle? But what is this thing about marriage? It's it's the man's instrument. I mean, what, where, I didn't heard that attitude before about it. When and Drew, when you say the man, you mean the man, not the man. males. Yeah, right. I here's here's my take on this. She probably denied. I bet he doesn't really want to get married. That's the point. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and so she's buying into it and pretending like she doesn't. That's want That's right. Either. Absolutely. Because she's saving some face and some pride. Yes, he's yeah. going to be on to the next thing, and that's that. And her thing is, is well, yeah. Once she gets pregnant, he'll be on. Yeah, her be thing sure. is, is I got to get a kid with this dude to keep to, to keep lock him. it. Yeah. yeah, because I can't lock him with the wedding. I'm going to lock. Well, because him with the, the wedding is just a piece of paper, and uh, that's the man's paper. That's the man's instrument. Uh, listen, I, there ain't a 21 year old non lesbian chick alive who is with a guy who <laughs> is the father of her child, essentially her three year old, who wants to have a child with this man who doesn't want to get married to him. She's just selling us. She's selling us a bill of goods. David? Uh, yeah. Year 15? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, the man show's on right now. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Comedy Central, everybody. Uh. David? All right. I don't like his attitude. There you go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what? That's why. Hey, you know, the man show's on. It is. Uh. Yeah, Comedy Central. Uh. <laughs> is he stoned? Is that his question? Uh. Hold on a second. David, are you really stoned? Uh, no. No? All right. Well, now you got to pay. I'm putting you on hold, because that would have been the only acceptable excuse, you being really big. All right. Turn that show on. I want to go watch it. Mm -hmm. Ann? Anderson? Is it on? Is it a commercial? No? All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. Go! Tonight from Popular, Friday night, 9 o'clock, WWB, everybody. I don't know something about San Francisco. You I did? Just, I was just telling you about the conference. I had a great time with my wife. I spent some days time with her, finally alone. Really? Great. She was uh, conscious during that period. <laughs> we had a great and we had a good time. time. We had yeah. a great time. Interesting. Nice. Interesting. San Francisco is a beautiful town. I love that San Francisco. The drive you know over what, that though? bridge. Uh, yeah, it is beautiful. I had a different sort What's of. What's that big bridge called? Which one? The bay or the bigger uh, one? Yeah, yeah, the bigger one. The, uh, bigger. It's the red of, one. It's called the red bridge. Kind of uh, yeah. But I, I, th that town is um, mm -hmm. uh, high on itself. Yes. You notice that? A yes. A lot of very self-preoccupied. There's uh, there's some tears the around there. The dot-com thing. The dot-com thing. I really changed the attitude there. Yeah. Hmm. People I, are very know, nice. They're very, mm -hmm. very smart. Very you know, nice. people people traditionally complain about old money, like, uh, <laughs> you know, Thurston Hell the Third yeah. type of money. But uh, I could make an argument against new money. I'm talking about uh, rap stars, athletes, and dot-comers. Young people with a big fat wallet. A little testosterone sprinkled into that uh, piggy bank. That's a bad scene. That's worse. You know what I mean? Mm. That means bad jewelry, bad cars, <laughs> bad clothing, and a big mouth. <laughs> you know, people people do. They make they make fun of like the old white rich guy, but you know whose father was rich and whose father's father was rich and whose father came over to this country rich. But you know what? Those guys know how to act. They just shut up. <laughs> They may say things about you when you're not around, but they're they're not they don't have like a uh, seventy thousand dollar convertible with the stereo all the way up at uh, four thirty in the morning and solid gold tires. Yeah, and they're <laughs> wearing like a uh, gold lame uh, uh, parka. <laughs> you know, they're they're not assholes. In other words, they're their own kind of asshole, but not not the kind that's going to affect your life. You know, see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frisco does have a little have a little uh, sort of new money tude over there. And uh, yeah. you know what? You know the thing about. Oh, it's impressed with it, I'll though. tell you the thing about San Francisco. Everyone who lives in San Francisco figures they're smarter than you are. Yes, that's that, that's, the that's what it is. That, that they're impressed with themselves. They're smart. And you know what? Some of them are. Well, yeah, they, they, are. they have a lot of that going on there. But if you're if you're from L.A., you're an a-hole. Yeah, well, that's mm -hmm. true. And yeah, that's a, that's I'll, fact. I'll, I'll, I'll put that down. They're yeah. living up there, and they're geniuses, and they're smarter than you are. And by the way, even if you uh, on some sort of uh, uh, outside chance you happen to make more money than they do, it's only because they're keeping it real and they're artists. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, yeah, there is that attitude. Marcus, yeah, you're 19. What's up? Yeah, I was uh, wondering what a wet dream is. Well, you have it. Ladies, man. You're, uh, you're 19? Right. You haven't got to the bottom of that one yet? Nah, because they, like, explained it to me in 13, when I was, like, 6th grade, but I didn't understand it. Okay. Do you masturbate? Yeah. Okay, pretend you're masturbating while you're asleep. you got to masturbate while you sleep. No, no. Some people do do that, but that's not what happens. It just, your your brain triggers a spinal reflex and you emit things. No, it's God giving you a hand job. 
basically. <laughs> That's the other way of looking at it. It's yeah. God giving you a reach around. Oh. A, a frontal release. Yeah. Everybody up for That's some church right. after this? All right. No, it, it, you fall asleep, you dream of sex, and you have an orgasm. Is uh, geez, Should I even... Is orgasm too? What? To advance the word for Marcus? No, no, that's right. You make a <laughs> on your sheet, and that's what happens. Oh, for Christ's sake, he's 19. Doesn't this guy have... Hold on a second. Marcus, I don't believe you. No, for real, I don't... I, like, don't, I dream of sex a lot, you know what I'm saying, but... Don't you have friends? Yeah. Don't they tell you, or are you scared to ask? No. Nah. They won't tell you. Well, a guy's not at the I've age of 17 really or 18 isn't going to turn to his other guy friends and be like, I don't oh, well, know well, what the hell well, this is. Oh, well, well, maybe you're right. Okay, well, He's going to keep no. some machoism to himself. Well, hold on. Sure what this, let me, this let me just, friends how, how, first off, how dare you, and secondly, <laughs> how dare you bring up uh, uh, my... Uh, my integrity. For his friends, his friends, where they were talking, they talk about masturbation since they were twelve. No, no. When no. when Adam came clean with the fact that he hadn't masturbated by the time he was fifteen, sixteen, they shoved him in the bathroom with an instrument and said, hey, "Go." It was Finish. a concert cello. Really? Mark, hold on a second. I'll get Flugelhorn. to the story in a second. <laughs> Marcus? Right. Okay. You know how you can wet the bed in the middle of the night if you have a right. dream? Go to the bathroom. You have a dream. Okay. Yeah, there okay. You there you go. There okay. You go. Now, replace urine with sperm and replace the dream where you're a bridge and banging a chick on a bridge and there you have it all right i think i uh, i think i illustrated that well for yeah, him the instrument was actually an electric toothbrush i remember i recall that, yeah. they, they should, ouch that should no no no, no. they use the bristles backside. or no bristles no, use, all right back the non-working right. hand yeah but they, they <laughs> should be some business end. <laughs> i took all the enamel off my johnson <laughs> No uh, cavities there. So uh, there, there forget about be. the brush. It was the flossing. Damn near cut the circulation off. There the needs to be some sort of. Uh, mm. we, we need to we need to emboss that or, or, or put find it that. Yes, we have to find that. That instrument. toothbrush. Yes, I think uh, I think it's over at Chris's mom's place. She moved out to Sacramento. We got to find that. It's now, basically, special toothbrush. Uh, basically, I was a late bloomer with the masturbation, and uh, my friends uh, found out that I wasn't masturbating, and they were outraged. <laughs> and uh, told me uh, this was going to change. Now, did it never cross your mind? or To masturbate? Yeah. Or that maybe touching your privates uh, would feel good. You know, it's a strange thing, and uh, Drew, you uh, jump in and help me out here, but everyone <laughs> sure. seems to have their own sort of clock when it comes to that. Yeah. And uh, some, some, some go a little early, and some go a little late. But I don't know if you can go back and sort of dissect it and question yeah. it. It yeah. just kind of is. Some guys... It's like it just never crossed your mind? So, well, it's weird in that, uh, you know, my family wasn't religious. Uh -huh. And uh, they were... Well, actually, is is paganism a religion? And I'm what sorry. about Santeria? That's, is yeah, that that's considered a religion? Kind of, yeah, kind well, my, so my father was pagan. My, my, you know, my mom was into Santeria. And so... <laughs> no, she believes so, you. All right, <laughs> she's looking for confirmation like, over here. The, the really, uh, nice. The, the point is, is what have I got myself into? There, okay. there, there wasn't any guilt trips or anything, right? I'm so just, it's not like you were raised Catholic. No, where no, I, was okay. just, I was just left alone, basically. But right. you were you were alone. pissed and you were busy, surviving and trying to find food. Yeah, I was. Uh, oh well, geez. Like well, I'll mention yeah. that part. There's other things. No, no, more I, was, I wasn't going through dumpsters, but but uh, other people's pantries. Yeah, Let's I, make I, bad I ate over at other people's houses a lot. You had but no privacy in your house. I, I had time to. to uh, actually, well, the very first time I, I masturbated was at my friend's house. That's right. So that's a good <laughs> that's a point. It's a very good point. Yeah. Okay, but <clears throat> I think that all guys have a sort of schedule. Left alone, I mean, without you know someone uh, smacking their uh, nuts with a Bible and uh, you know <laughs> holding a cross, you know, having an exorcism. But, but in a way, some guys, to some extent, the exact opposite's happening to our young males. That they're being bombarded with all this material on the web and stuff. Right. So things are happening right. earlier. And but, but would right. you agree that if you took, you know, 20 guys and you sort of left them alone... It would happen at a different time. It would oh, happen sure. at different times, but it'd be somewhere between 13 and 16. Mm. 16 would be on the late side... Thirteen would probably be on the earlier yeah, I side. I think you're going to see eleven to six. Drew yeah. got Drew Drew got going at what ten ten and a half. <laughs> he Drew, came out Drew, doing Drew, it. Drew got it early. <laughs> or, or, Drew did something early because every time I say thirteen, he rolls his eyes <laughs> 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 and uh, wants to say something about it, but he never does. So I. Uh, but in my in my experience with my buddies. Uh, I would say most of them got going about 14, 14 and a half, something like that. Maybe 13 and a half or something yeah, like that. So anyway, 13 and 16, somewhere in there. I just, uh, I got a late start, but don't worry. You've made up for it. More than. <laughs> okay. You understand? <laughs> Way more. 
David, oh, but you're continually God. trying to catch up, like every day. That's right. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't have myself yesterday. By the way, are you all right? That was, this, I'm okay now. Yeah. You mean thanks. the second time you did? Yeah. Have. Thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> you should have known. David. Uh, yeah. Uh, you're 15. Uh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. Um, I kind of have a problem. Um, uh, my girlfriend is kind of pregnant. She's uh, she's 14, and uh, I just found out about it uh today. And how how long into how far into her pregnancy is she? Um, I'm guessing about five months. Four oh, or five. Five months. Yeah. She, I think David's bogus. Yeah, well, let's, I don't believe. Him. Yeah, I'm almost don't believe. Him, but how did you not know about it? Um. Well, she, I kind of noticed she was kind of getting chubbier, but it's like she doesn't tell me when like her period comes or anything like that. And uh, I just noticed that her stomach had, like had been hurting a lot lately. And I asked her, you know what's wrong? And she told her me she hadn't had her period in a while. Her stomach is hurting. What does that mean? Um, like inside, she was having like stomach pains, and um, so that's what she basically told me. She was having like kind of stomach pains, and it was kind of popping out. Her stomach was popping out. Yeah. Well, it's too early in the pregnancy for that. For that, and you know, pain isn't usually part of pregnancy. So at that stage, anyway, it's too. It's what five months too early for the you popping. You out? often don't see anything, and it, the only pain you have are the it's, contractions it's not, and, and so that kind of thing later. It's not like that 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 much because she used to be like really thin before, but now she's like a little bit thicker. But it's yes, just sir. like in that one section. The rest of her like is flat, and then there's like a lump. Hey, can you turn the offspring down back there? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Who is that back back there? Uh, that was Metallica. Oh, okay. Turn that Metallica down. Oh, Jesus, you're gonna make a hell of a dad. You're just sitting home listening to Metallica. <laughs> Jeez, you're probably gonna uh, perform some sort of satanic ritual on that kid. Oh, what's your question, actually? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Well, she's way too young. Well, we were trying to like have a baby and wanted to like, what can we do to like? Go through and then, like, just abortion. give it up for adoption. Mm. Is it five months too late for an abortion? Yeah, not when I'm in power. I think it depends on the. <laughs> depends I'm gonna have. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna legalize ten month abortions. <laughs> <laughs> the kid can be up to a month old, and you can still put it down. <laughs> David, thanks for laughing. By the way, <laughs> it's nice. It's disturbing. <laughs> I'll, I'm gonna have the one year rule. I'll call it from the time of inception. Until uh, one year from that point. That's when life begins. Life life begins when you learn how to program the VCR. Life begins when mom times. gives birth to you at the prom, huh? Mm -hmm. um, That's right. It ends in the dumpster of the women's room at the Ramada. Anthem. You need to, David, go talk to somebody who can help you with these sorts of issues. Can I give you a number? Uh, yeah, I kind of do need one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, you can see about uh, giving the child up for adoption. That's that. That would be the best way. The thing is that we don't want. Um, her mom to find out. All right. Oh. 1-800-230-PLAN mm -hmm. or 1-800-942-1054. Did you write that down, David? Yeah, I got it. Are uh, you sure? He's putting it in his computer or something. Yeah, I'm typing it. Really? Yeah, I can hear him. All right, sorry to way ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> I can't type that fast. That'd be 45 minutes for me. I'd be looking at the keyboard. <laughs> I swear to Christ, there's no three on this. <laughs> no, there's no three. I swear, come over and look. I'll bet you 100. I type, that's how I type. I type and I go, okay, where's the G? Who took the G? The G was here before lunch. There's no, no, I'm staring at it. There's no G on here. And I can stare at it and not find it. Does that mean, is that stupid or is there something wrong with me? Both. <laughs> You'd say be, the lion's share of it would be stupid though, right? No, I think there's something like wrong. With like a sprinkling of something I'll wrong? give there's something wrong, but I know how you object to people blaming their mental status on, on syndromes like, uh, I don't like dyslexia. And well, I, I wouldn't want to give you any out. So I've had, I've had, it all I've had many a kind person try to claim I was dyslexic, and I tell them, no, I don't know how to read. That's different. It's like, <laughs> would you, it, let's, let's suppose you didn't speak Spanish fluently. Would you have an affliction, or maybe you just never learned? Right. You, you know what I mean? I mean, there's and people don't understand that about reading. You cannot learn reading, and you won't know how to read mm -hmm. quite easily. It's very easy. You take a kid, lock him in a refrigerator, put a few air holes in it, and, uh, <laughs> let, let, and then pop him out at 18. Let's see if he knows how to read. That was uh, that's basically how I grew up. So, is that dyslexia? Not everyone who doesn't know how to read uh, has dyslexia. But you do do get, tend to get fixated on self stimulation when you've been in a refrigerator so long. So that makes sense. <laughs> well, they shouldn't have left that mayonnaise jar there. Oh, oh and a, yeah. That's my main mayonnaise. That's my rap name, man. A's with a Z. <laughs>
We're going to take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we're going to talk to... Uh, uh, huh? We're going to talk to Sarah. Sarah, 17, gave boyfriend a blowjob, now has a painful bump inside her mouth. We'll talk to Sarah after this. Dave. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Tammy Lynn Michaels is our guest tonight. She is from Popular. We're having a, a very fascination, <laughs> fascinating discussion during the break about it's really uh, what a mess everyone's we, family is. You know, we need, we need a Love Line commercial show. Just string together, like, you know, the, 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 the discussions we have during the commercials. Yeah. I don't think people enjoy the regular show, though, Drew. You think they'd That's be, the uh, point. We <laughs> can salvage this thing by, show, by, by stringing together the, the snippets of conversation we have during the commercial. Well, the thing, the thing I wanted to say, I was talking to someone over the weekend about this, which is uh, Tammy's obviously interested in how people work. And oh. uh, I know Drew is endlessly fascinated in that. Mm. And uh, I am, too, because it gives me more fuel to uh, hate fun them. Of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does. They, they anger me, but I'm interested in how they work. And I was saying to someone this weekend, there's a lot of people that just go through life and they're raised in a certain environment or culture where there's not a not much emphasis put on that. And, I, and there's a lot of you who are listening to me right now who could give a rat's ass about that aspect of life. Yeah, and it's I'm, so strange. And I'm telling you, everybody, you are living smack dab in the middle of a population where if you learn how you work and your neighbor works and your girlfriend and your boyfriend and your mom your dad and your boss work, you're going to have a step up. Just a little bit. Just a little just, bit. Just, just, just an awareness. Life so. will be a lot easier if you do just a little bit of work in that department. And we hear all day long about getting uh, getting your master's degree to give you a step up on the competition and working out. Or reading Men's Health magazine, which is basically a uh, gay rag, but uh, give you that You're extra gay. edge at work and in the bedroom and all that other nonsense. Here's the deal. Figure out yourself, psychology, and people. That's who you live amongst. Mm -hmm. You're not Ted Kaczynski. You're right in the <laughs> middle of it. Everything you do is sort of dependent on that. And there's people you want to do what you want them to do. And they want you to do and, and what even, they want I you to do. I think even more you, important, you better do it. But just know, know, how, know how to realistically appraise who you're dealing with mm -hmm. and have a sense of what your feelings are and read them and understand them and well, take responsibility for them I, and that's I, it. I never I cannot understand that's why it. there's almost no value put on that in this society yeah. well I think the first I think that the first step that you have to do is just show up for people just show up in your body as opposed to in just sort of a black hole where you know what it's safe it's safe to sort of check out and and carry on a life within your head and not take in the information around you that people give you that you work with that you live with and it's easy to stay in that black hole I don't know what our guest said, but let's take some calls. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you're talking about the whole phenomenon of transference, where you just are automatically who you are, and you expect other people to be a certain way, as opposed to just being aware. Who is that person in reality? Not, what, not how do you see them through the prism of how dad taught you. And yeah, you don't right go through life casting a play. Alcoholic yeah, exactly. boyfriend, yeah. boss who doesn't appreciate you or right. understand you. Right. It's all the same. Magically, you cast the play in junior high, then you can't recast in high school, then you mm -hmm. recast in junior college, and then you recast you cast the big, the big, the big play. Big production. Is your kids yeah. and your husband, or your kids and your wife, or whoever it works? That's the big. That's when you hit Broadway. That's Broadway, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> then you screw your kids up, and then magically your kids do the same thing. Well, they're understudies. Yeah. If something well, should happen to you. They got all the dialogue down for your part. Yep. They're going to step right in and keep the show going. <laughs> so, everyone, please, just mellow out with that. Just get into psychology just a little bit. Just, just a little psychology bit. Because people I, okay. freak out about that. Okay. Just, just understand things. Just yeah. be aware. You're be a aware. human, and you interact with humans every uh, single day. There you go. Just learn about the humans a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Sarah, <laughs> you're 17. What's up? Yeah, hi. Um, I just want to say, Dr. Drew, you're really smart. I love you. And Adam, you're hilarious. I just love you. Thank you. I love you all night. Um, okay, um, about a couple of days ago, I gave my guy a blowjob. And now I have these, like, pumps inside of my mouth. Can you describe them any more than that to me? They're, like, they're kind of, like, they're, like, a little red. And then it's white, like, full of pus. Huh? And they hurt a lot. Where are they? Excuse me? Where are they? They're right in the side of the corner. 
right oh, in the corner uh, of your uh, mouth? Like, mm. on, like the on the skin, sort of. Yeah. You said they're inside your mouth. Yeah. Like, almost, like on the side. Like almost inside. Yeah. Okay, there's, see, your mouth, there's this opening, mm -hmm. and there's this stuff that goes around the opening, they're called lips. Mm-hmm. You with me? It sounds like you're describing something that's sort of on your lip. Might it be on the lip? Like, there's some on, like, the corner of my lip. Okay, is it like a cold, like a cold sore? No, and then it, then it is inside. It's like... Right, but your your lip goes inside your mouth, too. Don't, don't, don't bother. You pre-med, Sarah? And is it... Both sides, anatomic uh, yeah. PhD, anatomy <laughs> PhD, and any time both sides. Are you on any medication? No. Do you have acne or use acne creams, anything like that? No. And did when you were doing this thing, did you notice that the corners of your mouth tore or got irritated? Oh, I wish I could tear a chick's mouth. It was just I, like I was, couldn't get Bernadette Peters' mouth to tear with my penis with. <laughs> <laughs> Does the inside of your mouth sore at all? Um, yeah, kind of. Sometimes yeast infections in the mouth will uh, cause what's called chelitis or chelosis, which you, is what you, you describe. You don't think she has uh, herpes? Uh, that's, usually that's more inside the mouth. This is, this is the corners of the mouth, which is chelitis. And that, that is typically medication, vitamin issues, yeast inside the mouth. And you're, no, you're on no other medications at all, nothing else going on? Yeah, nothing else. Nothing, that birth control it, pills. It, it is in the corner of your lip. Yeah. yeah. No birth control pills, nothing. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, it's probably going to go away by itself. Uh, okay. I wouldn't do any. You can use a little Cortate over the counter. Sometimes that takes care of it. And if it is a yeast in your mouth and, it, and the soreness stays in your mouth, you ought to have somebody take a look at that. Okay. Uh, All right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Drew, I brought you a uh, three pack of my favorite jab stick, by the way, today. Thank you. Yeah, it's out in the car. I'm going wow. to get that for you. I want you to promise to use it. You'll, you'll enjoy it much more than that uh, high price foo foo stuff okay. you uh, import. I, I, I like just chapstick. No, 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 no. You oh, this is your stuff. Chapstick is like a... They, we just to just break a candle, candle yeah. off and rub it on your face. <laughs> Susie Chaffee, my ass. Popeye? <laughs> Maybe this is Ron. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? Is that him snoring? No, he's kidding me. I have no, no idea no, what no, this no is. <laughs> All right, hold on. Hold on. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, we'll get back to uh, Popeye. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All right. Kenny. Yes, sir. You're 19. What's up? Um, well, within the last three days, um, my left nut's been kind of swelling up. It's been hurting. Mm -hmm. Every time I pee and um, after a sexual experience. Mm -hmm. And um, After you pee? Yes, well, kind of. All right, go ahead. What's the question? Well, um, tonight, I just, well, I just got out of the shower, and um, I was checking it the way they say you're supposed to check for a yeah. stick of cancer or whatever. And um, I felt I felt a lump, and now I'm like having a you know nervous breakdown. Is it tender it. that lump? I'm sorry. Was the lump tender? Uh, kind of, but well. Hold on, I, everything on your nuts is tender. <laughs> Are you kidding mean, me? Did it hurt when you? An it. anvil, if it was growing inside your sack, would be tender. <laughs> anvil near your sack is near your sack. The problem. Oh my god. <laughs> No. Uh, but Kenny, look, you, you probably have epididymitis or a cystocele, something like that, because those are the things that typically hurt. Uh, and cancer feels hard, like well, a rock. Whole, I'm sorry to interrupt. My, my whole left nut just for... The swelling and all. The swelling and all is like more goes along with epididymitis. So tomorrow, see the doctor. It might be from... You said you're sexually active, right? Yes. So it could be the result of that. And it is something important to get treated. Because, well, I don't know. Like, Kenny, I think it's infection. I don't think it's tumor. Sure. Yeah, I'm not sure because I can't feel the. the he stakes lump. his reputation on it. But but it sounds more like epididymitis, that kind of thing. Okay, hey, Kenny. Yes, sir. If you die of scrotum cancer, Drew will uh, issue a public apology. Is that a promise? Uh, yes. I, 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 I will make him do it. That's all right. All right then. Hey, all uh, right, and deliver your eulogy as well. Yes, sir. So that's uh, that's going to help you sleep tonight, right, buddy? Uh, I guess. Yeah, he stands behind his wear, uh, diagnoses. Yeah. All right. It all helps right. helps to wear like uh, the jockey shorts too. It helps the lymphatic drainage of the. Tummy. I mean, well, all right. Well, I'm me, wear the worried, but yeah, wear the jockey shorts tonight. It helps it feel less painful. Really? Yeah. The uh, jockey shorts in bed. Say, in bed. Yeah. Like a like a. It's one to grab on there. Yeah. Why? Why it that supports help? it up. I mean, so gravity is not the lymphatic yeah. strain better mm. when it's pulled up. I've taken to not wearing underpants lately. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll be back. Hush, 
Shandala, 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 shandala. Okay. Hey, it's Love Line. I'm Mike Rowland. I'm Rowland. I'm Rowland. I'm Rowland. I'm Rowland. I'm What band is that? Oh, that's Disturbed? I like that song. At least that part. Tammy Lynn Michaels is our uh, guest tonight. She's from Popular Friday night. WB. And it's uh, third season. Second season. Third season. Second season. Second season. <laughs> well, you don't want to say second and have it be third. True. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. True. It's uh, second uh, smash season again. Uh, Nine o'clock Friday nights. And uh, Drew, mm -hmm. you ready to rock? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's speak to Robert. Robert? What's up? What's up? Hey, I was just wondering what the long, long term effects of weed was. Well, we're talking to him right now. He starts sounding like Snoop Dogg. Yeah. That's what happens. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> um, in, in teenagers, the effects may be more substantial than in adults. But there is some evidence that it actually may cause some brain shrinkage at a time when you really need to call upon your brain to sort of meet new and develop new developmental coping strategies. Oh, Is the understanding of this? No. Thing? Listen. You, you, you F up when you're a teenager if you smoke a lot of pot. Right. And <laughs> later on... I don't think you understood that. <laughs> pot bad. He bad. <laughs> Kimasabi. You must smoke plenty bong load and travel uh, for many moon. And you, 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 know, you, don't, you don't make much wampum. Later in life, <laughs> and if you, you live smoke, off stream water and pemmican, and it's, you are a slave to the uh, white man. As adult, you can do better. You can do okay with it for a while, but eventually, essentially, everyone will get depressed. You can get panic attacks. You can get severe anxieties, and these can be long term. Though usually they resolve within six to twelve months of stopping the. You're pot. bumming aside, Robert. Listen, here's all I know about the weed. We always know the guys who smoke a lot of it, and that's not a good sign. Anytime you're talking about a drug. Whatever it is, booze, heroin, pot, coke, whatever. If you know the people that are doing you it, this from uh, Mayberry, <laughs> you've, you've probably been doing some drinking. And I'm saying we talk to people all the time who smoke a lot of weed, and lo and behold, we know they smoke a lot of weed three syllables into their question, and they think it's not a problem. But believe me, if we know, and we're just talking to you over the phone, and you barely got out a full sentence, and we know you're smoking the weed, that's bad because it's affecting you. It's slowing you down. You know, You're not I, as sharp as you could be. You're gonna. Lie. I thought of you at this conference I was just at. We were talking about hallucinogens, and it turns out there's a part of the brain called the amygdala, which sits up here in the frontal lobes, temporal lobes. Sure. And it's a it's a part of the brain that that monitors for novelty. In other words, when you know when there's a change in the environment, like when it's when it's quiet, and some noise acts. You know, it, it picks up that there's been a change. And dr mushrooms and acid sort of hyper-stimulate that region, so things that are routine seem novel, ah, new. Yes, I've isn't talked that, about this oh. before. And uh, they, seem, they seem like brand new, like you're seeing them for the first time, and you start interpreting them in a different way. Yeah, you're like a newborn, but with a, a thesaurus or something. <laughs> uh, <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, everything's free. I, I've, I've uh, told the story many times, uh, getting high on mushrooms and uh, seeing a commercial for uh, Lee Press-On Nails and thinking uh, what a bizarre society we live in, that uh, women take long pieces of red plastic and then they stick them to the end of their fingers so they can become more attractive to the males. Well, how about how about women just taking big balls of weird plastic and, and sticking them, them in their, their breasts? Skin, their yeah. skin. That's they, even weirder. And you know what? You guys like it, so no, you... Not when I'm look high. Look at that. Not when I'm <laughs> high on mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, when I when I got high on mushrooms, it was so long ago that uh, at least first time, uh, because uh, I'm high right now. But <laughs> no, the the first time I got high on mushrooms, it was so long ago, and I had such a profound experience. But there wasn't really breast augmentation going on oh. so much back then, so it wasn't something Imagine I could freak out. Like, yeah. Plus, I didn't see a commercial for it, <laughs> but I did see the Lee Press on Nails commercial, and I was it really freaked me out because. You know, basically, your fingernails are sort of the human equivalent to claws. Yeah. I mean, th those are kind of your claws. And mm -hmm. the idea that they should be sort of blood red was extended. a little bit, and extended, was a little bit bizarre. And, had, and I read more into it than maybe the ladies probably wanted me to <laughs> at the time. But bloody red extended claws was not a good thing. And to I some mean, extent, pot does the same thing. 
It, it can. From that same novel it, except for you, you start laughing before you, uh, before you really <laughs> dig in. Probably, it makes probably sense. some people yeah. have more of that influence than others, and that's what makes it some of the euphoria is about things seeming. Yeah. And, and by the same token, when you've been stimulating that too long, nothing seems novel. Nothing is interesting. Right. So then, when you, so then, when you, if you smoke pot for a long time and you get you, to that point where it's not, where it's not novel anymore, then when you stop smoking pot, is is that where some of the depression comes? That you just thinking. can't get anything exciting. Exactly. Nothing is interesting. Right. So it's like chasing and, the dragon that first tie, that first, and you go to more and more and more. Well, it's kind of, it, but and and then the the <laughs> no, but, not but, at but, all. Tammy. Well, it's kind of a but the but the hallmark of depression is loss of enjoyment of previously enjoyable activities. That's the essential feature of depression. Interesting. So, so that's what pot does. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, you'll find that uh, the people call this show. And well, it, it well basically here's what it is. It's what when you're stupid, it's how you act. You know, people call this show, and I say, uh, "Hey, you know, I'm talking to some chick, and I go, uh, listen, your boyfriend's going to get fired from his job over at the batting cage." And as oh, it yeah. turns out, her boyfriend does work at the batting cage. Without us, yeah, it was weird. But she never mentioned her boyfriend worked at the batting cage. I was just making a joke. And she doesn't find that novel at all, that she I just, guess that her boyfriend worked at a batting she cage. She like, yeah, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Right. And now, uh, now, that's stupid. Yeah. But stupid will put you... <laughs> now, pot will make you stupid. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wonder if that novel part well, of part your of that, brain... Yeah, not being able to distinguish interesting and different from normal, from baseline. Right, yeah. right. That's stupid, and uh, pot can make you stupid if you smoke enough of it. But listen, I'm not against uh, weed. I'm just against 15-year-olds uh, getting baked every day. Shannon? Yeah? You're 26. Yes. What's up? Um, my boyfriend has osteoarthritis in his knees, mm -hmm. and it's a strange variety of osteoarthritis. And one of the symptoms it causes him to have is psoriasis. No, that's not osteoarthritis. That's psoriatic arthritis. Okay. That's that's a totally different thing. Okay. He probably has it in his hands too, probably. Um, not at this point. But he will. Okay. He will. Well, you got that to look forward to. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and he has psoriasis. Does he have psoriasis in his knees or no, just on his body? It's psoriasis has a form of arthritis of rheumatoid arthritis associated with it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's God punishing you. He can see his three or four different. Well, why can't you get rid of psoriasis? Can't you dip people in something? Why can't you <laughs> kill you can stuff? There's ways to treat it, but it's an autoimmune disease. And when it's with the arthritis, it shows you know it's a more generalized immune attack on the body. How old is your boyfriend? Thirty-one. Fantastic. What's so. the question? Um, the question is: We've both been tested uh, for STDs. Neither one of us have anything. The question is: Is a psoriasis transmittable to me? No, 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 no. That's an autoimmune disease. His his immune system is attacking his body. Is that what that is? Yeah. Is it, 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 why does it? You know, it comes out in the form of some sort of skin problem, right? Mm -hmm. Psoriasis. And where is it? Where where in your body is it usually, usually helping? The extensor services here. And the non-sun exposed more than other areas. So it's good to be in the sun, by the yep. way, for that, yep. right? Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. No, you'll be Penis fine, Penis is a Shannon. common place for psoriasis. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not in the sun that much. That's right. Not, not well. his. In the Adams. You walk around with it out, it gets a little sun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> hey, I got a note from my doctor. <laughs> What? I've got to come to work naked, guys. Let me just set this over here on the counter next to my coffee. Yeah. <laughs> is he is he getting methotrexate or anything for his arthritis? Um. Yeah, but he's getting treatment for that. What's he getting? What's he arthritis. taking? Arthritis. I'm not sure. Prednis exactly prednisone. Off the top of my head, what he's getting, but prednisone. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Is that that's an arthritis thing? I thought the chicks took that. Or what am I thinking of? You're thinking of uh, proge primarin. progesterone. I'm thinking primarin. of primarin. Yeah. All right. They should start them with different letters. Kyle? You really should have been a pharmacist. Hey. <laughs> Those are the P you take it. I don't care. Well, no. It's all the same. I, I, and they should have changed the name, damn it. Oh, I just thought of the, one of the, you know, I was thinking, you know, I drive around. You guys think I'm kidding. I drive around and think about what I, what I would do when I'm in charge. <laughs> you know what? I believe you do that. Yeah. That's how scared I am. You know, my, uh, one of my, uh, well, first off, I called the wrong number. Uh, tonight on the cell phone on the uh, freeway when you sh take the phone and you try to ram it inside your eardrum because uh, there's too much noise going on you can't hear and you get that uh, <laughs> and then the guy says hey you've called the wrong number and I think to myself every goddamn time I hear that thing I think to myself what about if the recording just came on where the guy said you've called the wrong number how confusing would that be why do I need the sound of a uh, cat being tumbled inside a trash can before the guys. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Why do I need that sound? Mm. Why do I need that MRI sound, Drew, before I get to the guy's yeah. voice? Someone's got to give me that answer because it drives me insane. And I'm, I'm driving on the freeway and I'm thinking, gone. When I'm in power, <laughs> gone. First order of business. First order of business, gone. That, that, goddamn, that goddamn screeching on the blackboard before the recording, gone. What is the danger of that? Are you going to keep talking? <laughs> Sorry, you have called the wrong... No, wait a minute, dude. Hear me out. <laughs> do, you, do we need that sound? Why do we have that? Ooh, that what? sound. That's, that's the second thing that's gone when I'm in charge. <sighs> now, what were we just talking about? Ah, you know what else is gone? Push and pull on the doors. They're too similar? P-U. Four letters? <laughs> gone. Gone. I change one, it's just like... Uh, yank. One is yank. Yank I, or kick. I hit that door with a head of steam. I'm not concentrating. Bang! The big aluminum thing. Everyone in the restaurant turns and looks. <laughs> what's going on. They think some, some sort of hostage situation is taking place over there. And it's just you. Push and pull. Same two letters. Gone. Yank. Yank. And push. That's it. I got, I got more, too. Oh, I got plenty. And, and let, let me tell you something, too. These are the kind of changes that people want to see. <laughs> I think they're interested in soft money packs and things like that, all this nonsense they're talking about or uh, what the hell's going on with uh, some foreign policy. No, guy, we want this kind of, we want these policies enacted. Sure. I would work locally. That's right. Kyle? Yeah? You're 14. What's up? Yeah, um, I met some girl. Um, there's a, a phone network. It's called The Loop. You know L O U P? Have you heard of it? No, haven't. You haven't? Oh, um. Well, anyways, I met some girl on, uh, on The Loop. I started talking to her, and she wants to know because she lives local, and she wants to know if she should uh, meet me somewhere. Was your mom in the room or something? No. You masturbating? Huh? Are you masturbating? No, What's is there something wrong with you? Do you have well, asthma? I'm just trying to keep quiet because, like, the other room, someone's in there or something. I see. Okay. Any, anyways, uh, I saw Dr. Drew. Are you there, Dr. Drew? Yeah, this is a bogus call. Yeah, all on. right, Kyle. Well, he mentioned the loop yeah, eight uh, times. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, if you want to uh, squeeze in a brand name or something like that, try not to give a five-second pause and then work it in in a real <laughs> urgent way like you're taking a cramp. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I met this girl on the uh, loop. You ever heard of it? L O U B. L U B. And uh, she was, you know, on the loop as well. <laughs> Seems to be just a little more casual when you're weaving in. That's all. all right. People want to check the loop out. That's fine. John? Yeah. You're 30? 34. 34. Yeah. What's up, brother? Um, I had a friend that just recently drank himself to death. Nice. And now I have another one that is snorting painkillers. Mm -hmm. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Okay. And I'm just wondering why and what it, what the, is it doing to him? Well, it's making him an addict. W what do you get with the snorting of the painkillers, Drew, that well, you wouldn't get from taking them? You know mm -hmm. about like a Vicodin? Mm -hmm. Can you snort and, a Vicodin? You know, it's, a, it's called Oxycontin. Yeah, which is more... Well, which is... Uh, uh, is it hydrocodone? Well, oxy means uh, more than one, many. And then uh, cotton means uh, it's Oxycodone. a kind of a plant that uh, sweaters are made of. Oxycodone so it means is the, is many, the, many uh, sweaters. Long-acting Percocet. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's poly. What's oxy? It's oxycodone. What's oxy mean? What's the prefix oxy mean? Made up. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything? Nothing specific. Oxy-10? Mm. Oxymoron? Well, give me the dictionary. Oh, frown, oh, no. <laughs> Can't you just know stuff? That's why you're here, Drew, if it was... Okay, but well, watch how fast Drew can look stuff up, by the way. Oh. It would take me 45 minutes to look this word up. Here we go. All right, you ready, Drew? But let's, let's continue the discussion. All Is right. it, uh, the, the people that choose uh, opiates usually have got problems with some other negative... Some problems controlling their affect. Oxy, containing oxygen, additional well, oxygen. Well, there you go. Okay, so, so uh, you're saying that, uh, like, oxy-10 has more oxygen in know, it? No, but, but it gives oxyhemoglobin, oxyhydrogen as the example. I don't, you know. So it's short for oxygen? No, I don't think that's how it's used in these. Not good? So. All right. Anyway. John? Uh, yeah. But people, people that choose opiates, who are basically are alcoholics, who have an awful lot of negative feelings they're carrying around, usually trauma survivors, that sort of thing. 
and opiates make everything fine. They work for them for a little while, but then they tend to throw a switch in the brain and actually cause a brain change that makes them permanently focused on the pursuit of that drug, and they can't stop. And that's addiction. And with opiates, that's an extraordinarily powerful change. Right, so what should John do? He, you got to get him to treatment, John. It's not going to stop without treatment. He will die of opiate addiction. Oh, no, he's just snorting painkillers. Yeah. Or, or switch to something else. If, they, if, he, if he makes the switch to something else, the intensity of use of that drug to make up for the opiates will have to be profound. All right, John. Thank you. Sorry, buddy. Sorry for your friends. But you oh. know what? Don't, uh, don't hang out with them either. No. I mean, at a certain point. Well, yeah, I mean, that's part, part, part of what yeah, gets their attention. One friend who just uh, died of uh, too much alcohol. You got another friend who's uh, snorting uh, Oxy-10. I mean, that's, uh, I mean uh, maybe you shouldn't be hanging around with all these people. It's something to think about, too. Yeah, right. but it, it, part of the loss, of, part of the, what gets their attention is the multiple losses that are incurred from the disease, so you can mm -hmm. be part of what captures their attention. Do you want to talk about your... No. What, Tammy, what'd you ignore it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I admit it. Tylenol. No, there's um, as far as addictions and stuff you're, like that. Uh, uh, well, you're there's free to share. Yeah, there's you know there's several people in my life who um, have dealt with addictions, whether it's alcohol or drugs or even pot. Um, and it, you can transfer addictions. You can transfer it from drugs to food to sex. And basically, I my personal feeling and my experience is, if you have anything to an extreme, it's to fill a void. T tell me well, when you move to sex, by the way. Okay, so anyway, well, here's, here's my theory, Dr. Drew, and I'm so excited to share this with you. My theory is, so far, um, if, if there's an overeating happening, that is a cover-up of sort of sexual abuse, or some sort of sexual trauma. Sometimes. If there's a drugs um, addiction, that tends to cover up verbal and emotional abuse, and alcohol covers up physical abuse. Like, th that's in my experience with the people I know and, and the conversations mm. I've held, I've always found that overeating and, and um, addictions to food is to change the body. Yeah, and to protect the, away. Yeah, to, to protect, protect people away. Yeah, absolutely. But, but usually th that doesn't end the story, because usually there's so much pain associated with having been sexually abused. Abso oh, so absolutely. That with that. Oh, Cruz's yeah. theory is uh, physical abuse uh, as a child, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, drug abuse is uh, related to sexual abuse, and then alcohol is related to sexual abuse, and then uh, eating, <laughs> and then what, uh, eating paste, did that be a, That's a byproduct of sexual abuse? Well, and farting after midnight is sexual, <laughs> sexual abuse. abuse. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, some, there's some pattern in there of, of that type. That's absolutely true. All right. That's so, uh, what do you, did, does Tammy, do, do we need to know something about Tammy? No, it's no. not about her. Oh, it's not about no, it's me. not about me. Okay. There's somebody who's very, very close to me in my life who um, is a recovering pill addict, and it started out with um, sort of binging on beer, and whoever she dated, if they drank beer a lot, then she would drink beer a lot, and then it came to her not drinking beer as much unless they were around, and then it went to pills, and then she became addicted to pills, and then she became addicted to alcohol, and it just was a cycle. Hmm. She's single? Transfer? She is. <laughs> it's like my kind of gal. She's several years older than you. Oh, all right. Well, you know. You into that? Give me some of them right. pills. We got a deal. All right, Drew. Hmm. You're, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you're, you're really, you're like Tonto with a uh, med medical degree. Hmm. <laughs> James? Yes. Uh, you're 20? Correct. You've never hmm. been with a girl? No, I haven't. Yeah, you're not yeah, no. missing much. <laughs> you, you have a uh, social uh, phobia? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I heard Drew talking last week um, with someone who was with a 27-year-old virgin. Right. And uh, I was wondering when it's considered to be a problem. What? When's what's considered Your a virginity? problem? Your virginity? Well, never being with a, a woman. In other words, if it's if it's something that's not part of your value system or your, your moral beliefs, it's just... I think he's looking for an age. It's a byproduct of your condition. The problem is not the symptom. It's a symptom. Your problem is your condition, that you have difficulty connecting with people and associating in social circumstances, and that can be treated. What happened? What do you mean? <sighs> What's up? I mean, uh, why do you think you're this way? I don't know. I mean, I've been going to a therapist and a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. and I'm on Paxil and Clonopin. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And is that helping? Uh, excuse me? Is that helping? Uh, it helped with some of the symptoms, like the blushing things like that mm -hmm. but i still have problems socializing yeah do you have any friends um i have i had two but they're both white college right now 
They're away at college. Yeah. And uh, so that's it. Now you, now you don't have any friends. Right. Do you work? Yeah, I work second shift full time. I well, see. It seems to me that this is the kind of situation where what they call cognitive behavioral interventions would be awfully useful, which is just helping you plan and manage and cope with developing new social yeah. connections. Now how does that work? I don't know anything about it. Oh. <laughs> but hey, no, hey, I know that it exists. Well, here's the deal. Here's my take on this. Uh, where do you work? I work in a lab at a hospital. Fantastic. So it's uh, basically all women. <laughs> nice. That's good. All right, here, well, no, here's what I was going to say, unfortunately, for uh, young James. Uh, it's easier to make friends. It's going to be easier for James on a sort of, on an uncomfortable scale, uh, one to ten, ten being best. It's going to be a six to talk to some guys as friends, and it's yeah. going to be a nine or ten to talk to some women for a date. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be like a hundred for him to talk to women. Well, now it is. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Well, really, no talking. James, don't kill yourself tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not just because Tammy said what you said. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, that, I just he just seems so shy. It seems like it's physically right. painful for him to talk to to yeah. women. He, well, here here's what you need to do. I have don't, a problem talking to him as friends. Yeah, I, I don't start in the workplace. That's my first or first. Oh yeah. Do not start there. Uh, he's, no. Okay. Because if things right? go bad, he's going to be spun about it. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're going to go bad wherever he goes. Well, so you're right. But yes. Okay. Better they should go bad at the Red Onion than uh, over at the lab. Yeah. There could be a fire. Things go bad at the lab. <laughs> things catch on fire. It's fire. Rabbits it's die. Mix up the urine. And the okay. Hey, James. Yeah. James, listen to me. You make some guy friends, okay? Yeah, and that, don't is, worry, that, is, that don't, is the first order. Don't, don't, don't worry about the cool in hip guys like myself. You, <laughs> you hang out with the nerdy guys, the Dungeon <laughs> Dragon guys, you understand? But you make some friends. Make some dude friends, and then you hang out, and now you got a little confidence, you got a little click, and now you and your buddies go out on the weekend, and then you tilt a couple of beers, and you shoot some pool, and you see if you can meet some women. All right? Go with the guy yeah. friends first. Yeah, you gotta have you got to have your guy friends. As much as women complain about men and their buddies, I don't, I don't think I know a woman who would trust a guy who didn't have any guy friends. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't trust yeah. that guy, would you? No. You'd think there's something up with this guy. Well, yeah. I, 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 I mean, it's, it depends on what the guy friends are doing. If they're all mooning women and, like, sh yeah, you yeah. Know, shooting up and... Woo! and yeah. <laughs> well, what else do guy friends do? Uh, huh? uh, you know, I mean, if, if they... It depends. I mean, I like guys who have friends because it just shows that there's bonding. I think it's actually very sweet to see a bunch of guys hitting each other around and be like, oh, you're so stupid, because yeah. it's actually very right. endearing. Women, women are... What's I wrong mean, with Tammy? Obviously. What is wrong with Tammy? <laughs> I we'll can't quite figure out it out. I've never heard something like this before. We also know that women love guys with friends because once they get with them, they constantly uh, harangue them about hanging around with their guy friends. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? So obviously they're attracted to those kinds of guys. I want to say something. He said he worked at the lab, and it reminded me of something. I've been watching a lot of Charlie's Angels this uh, <laughs> this week. It's been a, a Nick at Night or uh, something, something like a Charlie's Angels marathon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I used to watch Charlie's Angels when I would babysit yep. when I was, uh, like, 13 years old. And so uh, now I'm kind of reliving that. Mm. And uh, anyway... I uh, opened some pie filling and put some uh, miniature marshmallows. Did you? No, I didn't do that. But I used to do that with baby. Say, I go, I go nuts. But here, here's here's what I've learned from Charlie's Angels. And I was I was telling you last week. See, Charlie's Angels is not just Charlie's Angels. It's Aaron Spellings, and it sort of sort of speaks for every show of that time. Yes, basically. Oh, yes, it does. And uh, I was telling uh, Drew last week that the two ways you killed people in the seventies by was one was by cutting the brake lines to, to their car, right? Which uh, we all know kill someone instantly yeah. and the second way is uh when they got in the sauna you put a chair up against the doorknob and, and then turn it up you turn it up yeah because as we all know and anyone who manufactures uh, saunas can back me up on this if uh you know over 130 will kill a man you build them to 185 190 no problem no problem and put make sure the knobs out there with the big red arrow on it that says danger, danger yeah. at the bottom that's genius <laughs> that's genius <laughs> We're installing a sun at the at the health club. What's comfortable? About well, 105, 110. Uh huh. What can the human body tolerate? Uh, 120, 125. Uh huh. What's this go up to? 202. Nice. And where do you, where's the knob? It's on the outside. <laughs> Let's just turn it all the way up. How long could a human live in there? Eh, four or five minutes before they died. Great. That's a great plan. But the other thing I noticed about 70s TV. 
I was watching this week uh, with Charlie's Angels. A lot of, a lot of shenanigans going on in the hospital. A lot of hospital-related stuff. Was oh, that right? The hospital was a dark and spooky place in the seventies. Oh, right, because it just the medical technology just sort of hit in the sixties. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so they'd be. It was all of that. Okay, first off, there was the prison or the witness who was in the hospital. Yeah. Remember all these seventy shows? Yeah, yeah. Cops standing out front of the door of right. the room. Right. Guy walking in in the janitor's outfit. Right. Yeah, I got to take care. Cop uh, falling asleep on the chair. Janitor well, now holding the pillow over the guy's yeah, head. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of shenanigans, a lot of murder, a lot of nonsense going on in the hospital, Absolutely. ironically enough. And the hospital was a spooky place in the 70s. They'd open the, they'd open the quarter, they'd look down at the quarter, be dark, yeah. and nobody would be in it. Right. Like some some guys trying to rape one of Charlie's angels, you know. <laughs> she goes bursting out of the room and into the hallway, and it's dark. There's nobody there, and there's nobody there. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I mean, okay, maybe a library, a hospital. Who decided? A, how, there, first of all, there's no place more well lit than a hospital. It's I mean, you open a closet, a mop closet, you're blinded. It's so light in a hospital, yeah. and there's tons of people everywhere all the time. Day, yeah. You can't have a madman chase you down an endless <laughs> corridor like with a scalpel, and then hey, then you get into an empty elevator. Yeah. Oh, oh, Christ. Then you open the door. He's there. No one's around. Once in a while, there's a guy pushing a gurney, but only so the guy could knock him over while he's running. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've been to, like, the Kaiser Permanente out in uh, West Hills or whatever the hell that is over there. You can't get... First off, you can't park. <laughs> You gotta walk. You gotta park your car like uh, 40 miles away and walk because it's packed. And you open the door, you can't get in. I mean, you couldn't run. You couldn't do anything. What? How did that go, Drew? We'll talk more about it in the break and put that in our break show. Now, you know what I realized? Show. The commercial show. <laughs> no, no. I realized shows like uh, ER and Chicago Hope and all these shows, they ruined it for all these Aaron Spelling type producers yeah, and mean, stuff. They who put had the a mysterious, yeah. dark, strange place where you could get away with rape and murder. Yeah. And now they made it into some sort of bustling, well lit area that no one could cre uh, rape in anymore. Shoot. It breaks my it's heart. It's no fun. It breaks my heart. We'll take a break. Yeah! It is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew. Tammy Lynn Michaels is our guest tonight from Popular. Friday night, 9 o'clock, WB. The other thing I learned from watching Charlie's Angels, <laughs> and it's been nonstop. It's on when I get home at night. It's on. I, I watch it all weekend. The other thing I forgot about Charlie's Angels is they constantly go undercover, right? Yeah. Like, uh, there was a great white slavery one. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know what happened to white slavery. That was another thing that was very hot. Yeah. Infants for sale. Young blonde women for sale. Yeah. A lot of uh, people, white people getting sold. Apparently, that's cooled off a little in the 80s and 90s. I'd like to see it come back. Because <laughs> like, now I got some money. I'd like to see this white slavery come back. Buy myself a white person. <laughs> but there was these... Uh, so, so they go undercover to bust this baby ring. They get these beautiful women, yeah. the women get knocked up, they have their kid, and then they sell the kid off to wealthy couples. And that's all fine, and going undercover is all fine. But when they go undercover, and I think it's because the ladies wanted to do a little acting, stretch their wings a little <laughs> bit, but uh, uh, what's her name, Sabrina? Kate Jackson is playing one of the prospective buyers at the White Slave for the infant, you know? So, she's got the big Charles Nelson Riley glasses on, she's chain-smoking, and speaking with this sort of southern accent. And not very effectively, by the way. And I'm watching it, thinking, you know, it's not like they know who you are. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They have yeah. no idea who you are. That you're Kate Jackson. Yeah, to me, you're Kate Jackson. You're the chick I'm going to masturbate to in another couple of years when I get the toothbrush over my buddy Chris's house. But to them, you're someone they've never seen before. Right. And the reason we know they've never seen you before, because you wouldn't walk in there if they'd right. seen you before. Right. So drop the uh, uh, big... Um, Drop the big southern accent and the glasses. And by the way, your acting is so obnoxious that you're actually drawing attention to yourself. Right. Like, if I were dealing with you at this place, I'd be like, hey, uh, her, yeah, man. this chick's freaking out. <laughs> she's chain smoking. And she's like out of a uh, Tennessee Williams play. You know, the glasses are everywhere. And I'm thinking to myself, this must have been one of these things where they said to the producers, listen, we want to stretch our, stretch our wings a little. I'm an actress. You I don't what, do though, fluff. It's, it's spelling. 
It's <laughs> you know what <laughs> you probably went for it before she mentioned oh, it. Oh, that Cheryl Ladd is doing her her uh, sort of uh, runaway youth thing, and it's all a disaster and all very distracting. And like I said, <laughs> do you need how far undercover do you got to go when no one knows who you are? And uh, by the way, aren't you drawing attention to yourself at a certain point with these big affectations, Lisa? Yeah. I know I must read way more into this than other people do. <laughs> I'm actually yelling at the TV set. <laughs> What's up, Lisa? No, okay. Well, um, I was listening to your show like the past hour, and there's some guy that called, and he's like 15, and his like he, his girlfriend's pregnant, and she's like 14. And they're, mm -hmm. and they're hell bent on the parents not finding out about the. The, yeah. The pregnancy. Well, yeah. okay. Well, I'm 17, and I have a two and a half year old, mm -hmm. and I'm part of this great parenting class at Santa Monica High School. Good. And it's like you can, um, like you can go ahead and talk to them, and they help you out, you know, to decide with, you know, if you want to keep the child or have an abortion or adoption. Great. Whatever. What's the phone number? Um, three one zero. Hang on, I'm right on my. Well, wait a minute. How do we know where this guy? This guy could have been calling from uh, Muncie. I know, but we'll just use this I number mean, anyway. No, you know what? They accept anybody that's under 18. From whatever any state. I, I know. I, I mean, it's, we're in Santa Monica, so I don't yeah, know. I know but but if you're willing to move to Santa Monica, then I guess so. No, this guy could have been calling from Baltimore. <laughs> What's the number anyway? So uh, I've got it. 310. 310 394. Mm -hmm. 39. Wait, 39. 39. Oh, my God. I just completely forgot the number. <laughs> well, I'm glad you called in. <laughs> Listen, 49400. No, it's just that I don't call it that much. 394900. 310 394 Oh, I hope you're right. Because somebody, if I give that number out, and a lot of people well, hear it. Drew, why don't you call it during yeah, the break? Yeah. <laughs> I was just checking. Sure you were. What's the problem, son? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, but it's a really great program. And I just, I recommend it for anybody because they help you out with child care for your, for your kid while you go to school. And yeah. even, you know, when they decide, when um, they start going to preschool, mm. they help you to find, they help you find schools. And, you know, can now I guess? Let's, let's, let's talk to Lisa are you, for are a you, second. Okay. Here. Because you're, you're, this is in the uh, People's Republic of Santa Monica? Yes. Because, it, you know, but really, there there is a potential for social work and, and government, well, maybe not government agencies, but agencies to help out with kids having kids, you know? Uh -huh. And this sort of a case point that, that if we prepare for what really happens to these young people and their kids, uh -huh. we can make the outcomes a little better. Mm -hmm. Well, we might as well get realistic about it, yeah. which is uh, the first thing we should work on is prevention. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think we should treat this uh, no differently than we treat uh, the, uh, drugs in this country. Any, which other, is, any other disease state. Yes. The first thing is, is let's try t to m live in a society where people don't do drugs, where people aren't uh, lured to do drugs. Yeah where people don't get, teenage girls don't get pregnant, and then let's have a plan for when and if, yeah. if and when they do. That, that's built on right. reality. Yeah, we'll work a little built rehab, right. and there yeah, you go. built on reality. There's, there's, a, there's a proposition in California that's going to uh, try to funnel a lot of these people out of the jail system into the rehab system. Yeah. Oh. I think it's Prop I think 36. Prop th oh, are you kidding? It'll be fantastic if you do it. Well, obviously. So, yeah, 90% relapse without treatment, so, I mean, in, in that system, so. Why, uh, I always wonder why it is that the <clears throat> policies of the uh, state or the country or the city have zero to do with psychological principle. Like with what will actually work and what will not be effective, mm -hmm. whether it's talking about crime or drugs, drug acts or whatever, teenage pregnancies or clean needles for junkies, yeah. whatever it is, it should all be based on how effective it will be. And that's it. Not moral or religious uh, components. Just is it going to work or isn't it? Are we going to have less people in prison or are we going to have less junkies? That's it. And You know what I think, though, in this country, yes. though, re religion has always been an important part of the expression of liberty. Right. It really, it's intimately tied with that. So as soon as you talk about things that affect liberty or add to liberties, uh, immediately you start talking about ideologies. It's just woven right into that. Okay, mm -hmm. but here, here's the deal. Obviously, the war on drugs has not worked out as well as we thought it would. Uh, the war on anything that people want doesn't seem to work out. It really doesn't. If there's a demand, there's a supply. And uh, obviously, the people we don't want to have the money then get the money. And it's a very vicious cycle. It's that way with any substance. So let's try to get rid of some of the demand. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's the only angle on this. Yes. Otherwise, 
it's a sort of feudal angle. Mm -hmm. It's like building a sandcastle and having the tide come in and destroy it or, and you hurrying up and building it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's tide is going to come in every night at sunset and destroy it. It is done. No matter how much of the Bible you read, Never tide's going to come in. That is right. You can't be just throwing that around thinking <laughs> your kids aren't going to have sex. Throw them a condom too with that psalm. That is right. Thank you very much. All right. I'll see you in hell, Tammy. <laughs> Drew? Anything? I'm on my way. I'll see you in the bathroom because I'm going to yeah. pee. All right. All right. Oh. I'd like to go off on that Santa Monica for another one. I, I can't stand that place. Well, it drives let's me do it. You do it while we're okay. here anyway. All right. All right. We'll be back. Sure. Yes, it is a love line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone. I oh, forget about that. Tammy Lynn Michaels is our guest tonight. She is from Popular, Friday nights, 9 o'clock, WB. Let me tell you something about, uh, since I'm just talking about nothing tonight, <laughs> basically blowing my own horn. Might as well just uh, keep on going with that premise. I went to a Blockbuster uh, video rental store last night, rented uh, High Fidelity, actually, which I uh, very much enjoyed. Went to the uh, new release uh, uh, section. I was in three movies. No, that's good for you. Thank you, Drew. What, what three? The, 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 the uh, <laughs> Buzz Lightyear? No, j just three. That's all you need to know. Well, Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, yeah the, Buzz, the Buzz Lightyear uh, cartoon was out in the new release section. The uh, thing with uh, Freddie Prince Jr. The Down to You. Down to You. And uh, that uh, Brooke Shields movie. Oh, that was out? Yeah. I just got to see that. Yeah, what the hell is the name of that movie? What if anybody has seen that film? I can't remember the name of that. No, no one has certainly called to tell us they've seen that film. Uh, I've seen it. I thought it was decent. It yeah. wasn't bad. Yeah. You weren't bad. It was all right. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it is no Huel Hauser. Okay, <laughs> there. <laughs> Three movies in the new release thing. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's, it's pretty good. And then uh, there was some guy, and he was thinking about renting that uh, Brooke Shields movie with his girlfriend, and I was standing right there. Yeah. And he was like, he was like uh, I don't know, what's it about? Oh, this girl, she goes to Palm Springs with a few of her friends and has a little uh, sexual liaison. And her, her, his, like, his, his, his uh, girlfriend's like going, well, I don't know. And I'm like standing there going, come on, man, get the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't want that, but how about Buzz Lightyear? <laughs> Could I interest you? In, how about Down to You? And Freddie Prince Jr., He's a chip off the old block, that you know, good-looking uh -huh. kid. Yeah, I don't know why. I stood there, and it was very important to me that they rent that movie. Did they rent it? No, they didn't. Oh. No, they didn't. No. Oh. Like I was in for a taste, you know. <laughs> John. John, you're 22. Oh, yeah, hi. Um, I just want to get some perspective on this. It's kind of a strange call, but uh, I just found out that um, my, my father's been uh, tape recording all my phone conversations for the last, like, eight years. Per Whoa. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Mm -hmm. What? Oh. Um, and I just don't know what, how to feel. He, he apologized to me, and I mean, uh, this is really sick, right? I just want an objective yes. opinion. Yes, yes. It is, it is not, not healthy. How okay. did he do that? What? How did he do that? Oh, uh, he's got his high tech equipment or whatever downstairs, and I found all these tapes. And but you know, it, it's it's his deal, not yours. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it it affects you certainly, but you you realize it's it's a disturbed behavior. He's apologized. He's acknowledged that it's a problem. He hasn't d caused you any consequence, has it? Um, in what sense? Has anything has anything happened as a result of him eavesdropping? Uh. Uh, just, I just feel like yeah, you feel totally violated. Out. I'm sure you feel violent. I'm sure you're freaked out and violent. But, but you know, the point is that it's it's over. You haven't been harmed by it. It's your dad's problem. All right, don't but, don't oh, make it. Don't make it your problem For, any more than it already on. feels like it's your problem. I know this sounds like a, a, a great intrusion, but uh, why don't you go pull that puberty file and have have you know have a <laughs> bong load and really uh, knock yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> You're on, you know you're on, you're like thirteen and a half. You're on the uh, horn with some dude you haven't seen in five years now, and you're talking about this uh, new band coming out called Warrant. They're really hot. You know they sing uh, Cherry Pie. We're gonna go I love down. That song. We're going down to the ice. We're going down to the roller rink this weekend. You hear me stuff talking about some chick you like and all that. I mean this this is amazing. Hey, your dad's an idiot, but I hey Drew seriously as an adult. Oh, you'd love to have that. 
how, how weird would it be yeah. for you to hear yourself at 15? Be wild. Especially now, the only conversations... My... My... my oh. The conversation. Well, you listen, my, my family's so lame. They don't. They never took any pictures. We don't have home movies or cameras or tape recordings or anything. They don't. There's no documentation. You know, I I swear to Christ, I've I've uh, I've uh, gotten drunk and yelled this at my dad a few times. <laughs> which is, if something happened to me and they went to his house saying we need a picture, you know, to put in the newspaper to put on the uh, put up at the post office or something, he wouldn't be able to provide anything. It'd take him a long, long time. He'd have to search and search, and it wouldn't be wouldn't be anywhere near this time. It'd be like when I was uh, eleven, and there's one there, but there's no documentation of my. I mean, close your eyes and picture my family. Yeah. Okay, now picture them recording anything or doing anything. There's nothing. I played 150 Pop Warner football games. There's not a in in uh, you know baseball. There's not a picture. Not a nothing. No home movies. Nothing. I would love to have a tape of me at 14 talking to one of my buddies on the phone, especially when I didn't know it was being recorded. Right. Because if there is a recording of you, it's you goofing off into a microphone. Right. You're singing "Can't Buy Me Love." No, this is you. With, you know what I'm saying? This is you with your game face on. Yeah, Talk this to your is you like, yeah. dude. I'm going out for the sophomore basketball team, or there's some chick, or I'm running for. You, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be excellent. I, I think this guy should thank his father, <laughs> John. Yeah. Yeah, your father. Your father's a weird dude, but hang on to those tapes. And did <laughs> but, you did you do? Are you gay? No. Okay. Did you do anything weird on any of them? Well, I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I've you know, I, of course. I mean, nothing like. I mean, I had girlfriends and stuff, you know, and but it's just. Were you are are you are you putting it all together now, though? Yeah, I mean, I mean what I mean is, is some pretty some things that probably I didn't want him to hear. But, but what I'm saying is, is if you were saying to your friend on a Thursday night, yeah, tomorrow we're gonna get we're gonna get our older brother Kurt to go to the liquor store and get us some wine coolers. We're going to the park and we're gonna drink out in the park. We're gonna do some donuts and uh, his El Camino out on the lawn and blah blah blah. And then he said, to "Your dad, Dad, I'm going to the you know I'm going to the basketball game. I'll be back at that." <laughs> Did he not. like stop? I mean, do you no, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, you know, he was he's pretty cool for the most part. I mean, he's pretty liberal, open minded person, but he just oh, sure. he's he got takes some the creepiness calls. to him. And well, what, what I'm, I don't know if it's okay. A answer, thing. I, answer I, my I question. Shut up. Answer my question. Was there ever instances where you sort of knew where it seemed like he was tipped off? Yes, yes. Well, there you okay. go. There you go. So he was listening to the tapes after the yeah. after the conversation. Yeah. But here's my question: Are your parents married? Yeah. See, because I'm I, my first thought is his dad is like living through him or something, yeah. or vicariously trying to have another childhood. In, in or most of the situations where I've seen dads taping, it's because they feel out of control and they want to completely control their kids. Hmm. Yeah. And it's aggressive, and it's intrusive, and it's a real serious violation. All right. But I'm trying to I'm trying to sort of minimize your feelings about that right now. Well, John, get, get John, John look life. on the bright side. If this was your mom doing this, you'd be gay right now. <laughs> so you dodge that bullet. All right, well, all right, buddy. I, I, all right, tell tell your dad. You, you know, you don't really give him. Just tell me you lost a lot of respect for him, and now you want. I mean, that's things. what I basically said, and it just. I just I just feel creeped out right now. Yeah, you should. Sure, that's all right. You know, it's, you know. right. Um, I never thought I'd be calling the show ever, but thanks, yeah, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Love you too. Right, right? And I, I'd, I'd had many fantasies about talking to John, but never thought it would actually come to fruition. No. And here we are. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, how disappointing! <laughs> what a yeah, disappointment! I thought he'd be taller over the radio. All right, come on, let's uh, squeeze something in. What do you say, everybody? All right. Well, uh, this is the one I want to talk to. But... All right, Daisy. Oh uh, yeah. You're 19. You always want to have sex. Yep. You've had 200 partners. Mm, more. Oh, more than 200? Are you an addict? Yeah. Uh, to what? A uh, crack. Yeah. So this is part of your addiction. And were you sexually abused when you were a child? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is the recipe that creates Daisy, which is sexual abuse in childhood meets the biology of addiction, meets opportunity for drugs. Meets a need for love. Meets <laughs> It's all that emptiness. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah there you go. Daisy, you can't count partners if you're doing it to score crack, by the way. And, and you, but you, you know sexualize I mean? your feelings. All, all so you're, you're each time you're in, you compulsively act out. You're that five year old well, kid again. Well, she's doing it to get the crack, though, right? Part, part of it's that. Well, well, but if if you're also taken advantage of sexually at a young age, you feel like sort of that's all you have to offer. That's who she is. Yeah, that's who she is. But this needs treatment, Daisy. Seriously, you're going to get AIDS. You're going to. I'm in treatment right now. Where are you? Uh, what state? You're at a hospital. No, I'm in a house right now, but I go to 
drug treatment. Okay. All right. So uh, you're on your way. Talk about this in treatment. Talk about yeah. everything. Things you feel the most ashamed about, that's the stuff to bring out in the in the first step and to bring out with your counselors and with your sponsor because those are the things that fuel your relapse. Yeah. That's and everybody else is feeling them too, babe. That's yeah. what I do in therapy. As a matter of fact, uh, the topic... <laughs> you don't say anything that changes. Uh, how dare you? The topic of this Tuesday's uh, therapy <laughs> session will be, it looks like an all-New York World Series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want you to talk about one shameful thing with your therapist this week. That's your... Okay. And how the hell he lets you... Like, how dare you go to therapy and him get you let you get by without talking about anything important? All right. I'll tell you what. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Drew... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of issues with shame, and uh, <laughs> quite, I mean, frankly, the way he acts, uh, I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> oh, would that be? Would that work? Well, you may have shameful feelings about me. Yes, I do. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We'll take a little break. We'll be back. All right. I want to thank Tammy Lynn Michaels for coming in here. Thanks, you guys. Popular, everyone. Your coffee was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Nine o'clock Friday. Dubba 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 dubba. WB, everybody. Kim Coles will be in here uh, tomorrow night. I think she's uh, on the new uh, Gina Davis sitcom, so she'll be uh, in she here talking about that. She was on uh, Frasier, too, for a while. She was on Frasier for yeah. a while. Kim Coles was? Yeah. And wasn't she uh, talking about... Weren't we, weren't we talking to Kim Coles about her... What were we talking to her about her last book? time? She had book? a book? Yeah. Yeah. I think she, we've seen her even once since that, though. All right. Well, we'll get into her. She's, yeah. uh, she's a good guest. Tammy, thanks a heap. Thanks, you guys. Popular, everyone. And until next time, this is Adam Crawl for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. The gerbil I put in my ass is acting strangely. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.